This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Grace and peace to you and welcome to the worship of God here at First Presbyterian Church. I'm delighted to be here with you this day and to celebrate this worship and this baptism with you all. I welcome uh, visitors that are here with us this day and uh, I believe is there a coffee hour afterwards that I should be inviting people to? Yes, there is. Marilyn shaking her head. Yes, coffee hour is right next door in Fellowship Hall. So please join us for a time of coffee and light refreshments. And um, it's so wonderful to be with you again this day. Um, so we are going to begin our worship with our call to worship. And you'll be leading that, correct? Okay. Thank you, Joanne. Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship. People of God, let us gather to worship and praise God's name. I give thanks to you, O oh God, with my whole heart. I will glorify your name forever. For great is your steadfast love for me. You have delivered my soul from the death. God says, know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go. Let us pray. God who knows us completely, who knows our words before we even have a chance to speak, wrap us in your presence. Still these distractions that well up in us. Search us, know us, and guide us to the wisdom you would have us here today. Amen. Please rise if you are able and join in our opening hymn, number 645, Sing Praise to God Who Reigns Above.
So I've been filling in as pulpit supply around the Presbytery of Northeast New Jersey, and every order of worship is a little different. And I neglected after doing the welcome to see if there were any announcements, because everybody places their announcements in different places within the order of worship. So uh, forgive me for that, and I'm just curious at this time if there are any announcements that need to be made. Be happy to hear them. Are we serious? There's no announcements at Woodbridge? <laughs> okay, then let us continue with worship. And uh, when we get to the end of the worship, if someone thinks of something that uh, is needed to be said, please, uh, please uh, go ahead and, and make that announcement. So I guess you guys are standing for the call, for the call to confession. So please stand as you are able. <laughs> Sisters and brothers, all who are led by the Spirit of God, are children of God. We did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but received the spirit of adoption. Let us then confess our sin with the freedom of children who know how deeply they are loved. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Merciful God, your creatures cry, creation groans, but we turn away. We surround ourselves with noise. We are quick to excuse ourselves from responsibility. We are young, we are old, we are tired, we are busy. It is hard to imagine that we might make a difference. Life-giving God, wash us clean. Restore our imaginations and our hearts. Let your courage and compassion flow through our veins until we love you with abandon and our hands reach out in blessing for the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. Amen. Amen. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. I declare to you that in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. May the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Amen. Let us pray. Holy One, your love with a father's tenderness, a mother's zeal, move now in our hearts. Breathe through the words we hear, the songs we share, the burdens we carry, until we discover our purpose in your liberating love. For we long to join creation's praise and to shine with the mercy of the Christ, in whose name we pray. Our first lesson comes from Genesis 28, 10 to 19a. Jacob left Beersheba and went toward Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth, the top of it reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and to your offspring. And your offspring shall be like dust on the earth. And you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. 
Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. He, and he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. So Jacob rose early in the morning, and he took the stone that he had put under his head and set it up for a pillar and poured oil on the top of it. He called that place Bethel, but the name of the city was Luz at the first. Our second lesson today comes to us from Psalm 139, Selected Verses. O Lord, you have searched me and know me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, and the light around me become night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts. See if there is any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of the Lord endures forever. Thanks be to God. So when preparing for this sermon, I went to my familiar resources and commentaries, including this one, yes, the Children's Adventure Bible. Of course, this congregation is very familiar with this Bible. It is used in the Sunday school classroom, it's used with the Pray program, it's used with confirmation, it's used during vacation Bible school, and it invites the friends of the church to hear the word of God and to discover their connection to God's story. And it is my hope that Big Sister Harper and Little Brother Dylan, who will be baptized this day, will also grow in the faith through the stories of this Bible. And so as I open the Bible to Genesis 28, here I have it marked. Here at the top of the page, it says words to treasure, and there's a little symbol. It's all in gold and a little chest with gold in it. And there are these words to treasure. It says, I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go. Well, this is the verse that frames my reflection today. It is the lens through which we will explore Jacob's story and the psalmist's story. And it is the lens through which we will encounter our own story, intricately woven by God. Genesis 28 is the story of Jacob leaving home and beginning his journey in Mesopotamia. Based on recent events, however, it would be more accurate to describe Jacob's journey as fleeing from his home. He is escaping his brother's hatred. Well, if you remember back to Mr. Bob's class, Jacob's brother Esau wants to kill him for cheating him out of his father Isaac's blessing. 
Jacob, always a schemer and a usurper, has stolen Esau's birthright and the blessing belonging to Esau as Isaac's firstborn. This chapter makes no mention of it, but it is the context driving Jacob away. On the road to Mesopotamia, and apparently alone, Jacob is forced by nightfall to bed down on the ground. The Lord appears to Jacob in a dream atop a ladder or staircase connecting heaven to earth. On the ladder, angels are ascending and descending. In this dream, the Lord repeats to Jacob some of the very same promises in the same words that he said to Abraham. He will give Jacob and his descendants the very ground he is sleeping on while dreaming. He will make Jacob's offspring as the dust of the earth, spreading out in every direction. All the peoples of the earth will be blessed through Jacob's offspring. And the Lord promises to be with Jacob wherever he goes, to keep him safe, to bring him back to the land of promise. The Lord will not leave nor abandon Jacob. Well, Jacob wakes up overwhelmed by awe and fear. He makes a powerful connection between the Lord's appearance to him and the place where he slept. He calls the place Bethel, which means house of God. And using the stone that served as his pillow, he erects a stone pillar to commemorate the spot. Finally, in verses 20 through 22, which was not part of today's text, Jacob makes a vow. If God will be with him and provide for his needs and bring him back to his father's household in peace, Jacob will make the Lord his God. He will worship him at this place, and he will give to the Lord 10% of all God gives to him. Well, Jacob had an extraordinary dream that changes his life and the lens through which he knows God. His dream discloses the hidden yet active presence of God at this chance stop along the way. Jacob's dream is not only awe-inspiring and majestic, but also intimate and personal. In an alternate translation, Jesus stands beside him as he lies on the ground, promising to be with him wherever he goes. God's word at Bethel initiate a covenant with Jacob, an enduring relationship committed to his well-being and his future. Alone and in a strange place, Jacob becomes part of an intergenerational relationship with God. Jacob's vow signals the importance of returning to the place where, the encounter, where he encounters God most fully. Although Jacob continues on his journey to Haran, he remains oriented to Bethel, the house of God, with plans to return for worship and thanksgiving. Jacob's descendants throughout the earth also hold this particular place as an orienting center. For Christians, Jacob's vow resonates with our weekly return from our journey and our daily lives to the place where we encounter God most fully through worship, song, and sacrament. Like Jacob's story, Psalm 139 speaks to the intimacy and personal knowledge God has with humankind. In Psalm 139, we hear language and gain an understanding of God, a God who is cosmic, transcendent, distinct from the world, yet personal, imminent, knowing each of us intimately. Seven times in the first six verses, the psalmist addresses God as you, in a very familiar way. You have searched me and know me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down. You know the words on my tongue completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. God's knowledge is immediately around this person. With every moment of the person's body, every thought of the person's mind, every habit, every quirk. Nothing in our lives is off limits for God's knowledge. Secrets are impossible. Personal space shrinks 
with God's reach and God's touch. Theologian John Calvin, at the very beginning of his institutes, writes that there are two types of knowledge, our knowledge of God and our knowledge of ourselves. He writes, we are not our own, rather, we are God's own. But he also asks this question, which do we place first, the knowledge of God or the knowledge of ourselves? Jacob's grasp for status within his family reminds us of our human desire to seek out our own identities without any consideration of who God created us to be. Because God created us fearfully and wondrously made. We rely on our own self-image and labels that others have placed on us instead of this core truth that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. The question of identity, who am I, has been pondered by generations of people. It's our human nature. However, I believe it is particularly urgent in our time. It is not only teenagers who struggle with a sense of identity. It is a parent whose children are all away from home for the first time. It is a person struggling with issues of sexual identity. It is the retiree who has nowhere to go in the morning. It is the caregiver whose spouse has died after a long illness. One way or another, at one time or another, we all ask, who am I? Where does the meaning and value of my life come from? Psalm 139 invites us to receive an identity rooted not in the things we say about ourselves or the labels others assign us, but in the one who knows us more deeply and more lovingly than we could ever know ourselves. Perhaps Paul had the words of Psalm 139 in mind when he wrote, Now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. As the psalmist, and as Jacob discovered, our identity is rooted with the steadfast love of God, known in and through Jesus Christ. Because God knows us thoroughly and loves us fully, our lives have a worth that cannot be taken from us by others or ourselves. The value of our lives does not come from what we achieve or possess or what others may think of us. It comes from the God who knows and names us, from whose steadfast love nothing in all of creation can separate us. What wonderful knowledge as we prepare to welcome the newest child of the household of God into Christ's community of faith through the sacrament of baptism, Dylan James Seneca, known as DJ. So now, hear these words as... Um, I substitute Dylan in for the pronoun me, and I invite you to read Psalm 139 today and throughout the week using your name instead of the pronouns. Oh Lord, you have searched Dylan and know Dylan. You know when he sits down and when he rises up. You discern his thoughts from far away. You search out his path and his lying down and are acquainted with all his ways. Even before a word is on his tongue, O oh Lord, you know it completely. You hem Dylan in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon him. For Dylan, for big sister Harper, and for all of us, wherever we go, hold tight to the knowledge that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen. Now please stand as you are able as we sing the song, O oh Love That Will Not Let Me Go, hymn number 833.
please be seated. And at this time, I'll ask the family to come forward along with the sponsors for Dylan James, otherwise known as DJ. And Harper can come up too. Hi, buddy. If you want to stand on this side. Too much. You're all good. Oh, you want to be down. This one loves to climb up and down stairs. So we'll see if we can keep him in one place. It's OK. He can move around. Hear the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. These words come from Matthew 28. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. And now hear these words from Ephesians. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. And also standing with Dylan's parents are Brian Higgins, Aaron's brother, and Ashley Ramos, Aaron's niece, uh, who have been asked to participate in the nurturing in the faith of Dylan. So thank you so much uh, for standing up here with us this day. So I'm going to address the parents. Do you desire Dylan to be baptized? Relying on God's grace, do you promise to nurture Dylan in the life and faith of the Christian community? Do you? Do we as members of the Church of Jesus Christ promise to guide and nurture Dylan by word and deed with love and prayer? Will you encourage him to know, trust, and follow Christ and be a faithful member of his church? Through the sacrament of baptism, we enter the covenant God has established established in Jesus Christ. Within this covenant, God gives us new life, guards us from evil, and nurtures us in love. Through this covenant, we choose whom we will serve by turning from evil and turning to Jesus Christ. So now I have questions again for the parents. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world, do you? Who is your Lord and Savior? Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? Will you? Now, as the children of God, let us all stand and profess and affirm our faith using the words in the bulletin of the Apostles' Creed. Please join with me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. <laughs> Please join with me in prayer. Praise to you, O oh God, for the gift of water for creating this blue orb and giving it to us as our home, for saving us from the flood and blessing us with a new start, for leading us through the sea from slavery to freedom. Thank you for baptizing Jesus in the waters of the Jordan, that we might be baptized with him, and for welcoming us to the river of the water of life, when we will be raised with him. By the power of your Holy Spirit, keep us faithful until that day, renewing us with your life-giving waters until we enter your eternal realm, singing songs of praise. Amen. Here we go. <laughs>
I was Catholic once. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Hi. Oh, come here. What is the Christian name of your child? <gasps> oh. Dylan James. Ready? I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Dylan James, child of the covenant, you have been sealed in the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Good job. <laughs> you want to take a walk? Want to take a walk? Let's take a walk. Come on. Someone want to walk with them? We'll walk this way. Come on. Dylan, everyone needs to see you. Come on, buddy. You're a good walker. This is Dylan James. He's the newest member of Christ's household. And whenever we have a baptism, we're reminded of God's grace, a grace that cannot be uh, achieved, that we have not earned. It is just a free gift of grace. Oh, bumped your head a little bit. And every time we remember, or every time we take part in a baptism, we have the opportunity to remember our own baptism. And we remember that not the iniquities of the past, nor the uncertainties of the present, nor the contingencies of the future will ever be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ. And I know how important the baptismal vows are for this congregation and how seriously they are taken. And I know that DJ will always find a place here in this congregation, a place of love, a place of nurture, and a place of faithful growth. So he's on the move. He is on the move. Um, so there's a little gift from the Christian Education Committee that we'd like to give him, along with uh, a, a rose presented for him this day. Isn't that pretty, Harper? Isn't that a pretty rose? Yeah, sunglasses. Well, and I have a gift, too. I went to visit the family this week, and when I walked in the door, Danielle said, Harper, why is Shelly here? And she said, he's going to, Shelly's going to baptize DJ, right? Is that what you said? And then she proceeded to tell me the way in which I was supposed to do it. <laughs> so she has a lot of barony in her. <laughs> um, so <laughs> I want to present something to them because she told me I needed to do baptism with a super soaker. That, and she told me exactly how to do it. I was supposed to put it in the tub of water, right? Fill it up, and then I was supposed to squirt them, right? So here you go. Here are your super soakers, okay? And also in here, remember that I was talking earlier about the, um, the Adventure Bible? So I know that you're a little young yet for the Adventure Bible. And so I have for you a book of Bible stories that your mommies can read to you, okay? All right, and guess what, DJ? You can play with the bag, <laughs> right? And you have a super soaker, too, so you can get back at your sister. All right, so here you go. <laughs> Goody. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. <laughs> Who knew how much fun you could have with a hymnal bookmark? That's awesome.
before turning to prayer, is there anyone that you would, any joys or concerns that would like to be lifted up by the congregation? Thank you. Anyone else? Sure. Just to keep you updated, um, my husband Bob is really doing well with the chemotherapy and the immunotherapy. He just had his third treatment on Monday and very few side effects. Everything is going really well. He's got one more chemo, the immuno, and then the rest of the year is just the immuno. So I know it's because of all your prayers. This is certainly a praying church, so you know that sure you know that the prayers are with you and with your husband. Let us pray. Mother, Father, God, thank you for making us daughters and sons, co-heirs with Christ, sisters and brothers of one another, bearing witness with the Spirit that we are the children of God. We pray for the whole church that in the field of this world it may be the good seed that grows into your harvest. We pray for your whole creation that is waiting in eager longing to be set free from everything that holds it in bondage. We pray for the earth's people, its nations and leaders, that all may come to know the ways that lead to peace. We pray for those who are ill and for those who are facing death, that they may find hope in the faith that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing to the glory to be revealed to them. We pray for those we know and love, especially we pray for Holly, uh, who continues to get well, and we pray for her and her family traveling mercies for their upcoming trip to Australia. We pray for Matt Jr. as he cont continues with his mission trip to Japan, allow him to spread the gospel message to those people. We continue to pray for Joanne and for Joanne's husband, Bob, as he continues with chemotherapy and, and uh, immunotherapy uh, for his cancer treatment. We ask, Lord, that, that we may see the bond between all who we pray for and you, and that wherever they go, you are with them. Blessed are you, eternal presence, who with Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit lead us in life everlasting. So as the children of God, we are bold to pray the words that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us give back to God a portion of our blessings and our gifts. This morning's offering will now be received. The ushers may come forward.
Please join me in the prayer of dedication. God of mystery and grace, you have met us and blessed us with such abundant promise. In gratitude, we offer what we carry in our hearts and our pockets. As we bring these offerings, we pray that you would use us, for we come in the name of Jesus and by the movement of your spirit in this place. Amen. Please join us in our closing hymn, number 547, Go My Children With My Blessing. My brothers and sisters in Christ, know that wherever you go, God loves you. God loves you and you are fearfully and wonderfully made. May the Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you and keep you this day and forevermore. Amen.